Whenever there is hope, there is most definitely despair. Junko Enoshima. Those are the core elements of the Danganronpa series. Danganronpa is known for building up hope in the player and the students, and then snatching it away at the very last moment, making everyone feel the despair. That was my good friend Alex, and the person who would introduce me to the Danganronpa series. Before, I was interested in the series, but I never played a game like this before, and I had no idea what I was getting into. And oh my gosh, it was incredibly unique. Danganronpa is a series like no other thanks to its unique characters, stories, and gameplay that you won't find anywhere else. Except for maybe the Master Detective Archives Raincoat, because it's made by the same creator of Danganronpa and it seems to have similar gameplay ideas. Hey everyone, Matt Matt, Matt here, and today we're going to be making a video on Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. Or originally, I was going to make this video looking at all the Danganronpa games, or at least the main trilogy. I figured out that since I'm making this uh, Halloween special, I actually need this to release on time. I'll probably cover the other games another time, so if you like this video, please let me know, and let's head into the video. Hope's Peak Academy is simply a perfect setting for Trigger Happy Havoc. It's cramped, claustrophobic, and most importantly, mysterious. Future games would ditch this amazing atmosphere, and while I think they make up for it in other ways, the atmosphere that Trigger Happy Havoc provides here is simply fantastic and my favorite in the entire series. Trigger Happy Havoc is set entirely in Hope's Peak Academy, except for the prologue since Makoto, a protagonist of the story, is outside of it. Hope's Peak Academy has so many questions, and a lot don't get answered in this game alone. But throughout the story, you'll find out what happened in the history, and at some parts, it really makes you wonder what the hell happened inside the walls of Hope's Peak Academy. The further you get into the game, you learn more and more about the history of Hope's Peak Academy, and you learn about the tragedies that happened here. Usually, I'm not someone who cares too much about the atmosphere in my video games. The one given to us in Trigger Happy Havoc is amazing, and nothing can ever replicate it. It's simply fantastic. In Danganronpa, there are two themes in this game. One is hope, and the other is despair. And they're both something you'll see a lot in this game. All throughout this game, we're supposed to move forward in the face of despair, and find a way out. No matter what. And that's what hope is. I love Trigger Happy Havoc so much, because it lets its characters die at a flick of a switch like this. And there's no way to get them back. They're dead. I can't tell you how many characters I love who were taken away. Sayaka, Chihiro, Celeste, and Kyoko? Oh thank god. I forgot her execution isn't canon. I think I probably would cry to be honest. I think you should get some bitches. Uh, anyways. They're all gone. And there's nothing we can do about it, as a player. Eventually, we learn more about the truth of Hope's Peak Academy, and we finally escape this wretched place! The students have no idea what lies beyond, but they're forced to have hope. And that's the beauty of Duncan Rumpa. You immediately get put into action with you being put into a school where the windows are barred off, and eventually, DEATH! Junko Enoshima dies. I really wasn't expecting that to happen at all, and it was a huge shock to see someone die so quickly. I won't go too much into the story, as there's a lot of twists and turns, but I really enjoyed the story, as I got shocked and tricked so many times. I usually play games that don't focus a lot on stories, so whenever I play a game as focused on the story as this one, it's amazing, and in my heart, Trigger Happy Havoc pulled it off pretty damn well. Except for this. We don't talk about this. Another exception for me was the third case. I figured out he was a murderer really quick, which was, spoilers, Celestia. And to be frank, the entire murder case was dumb, and everything was extremely obvious. Like how Yasuhiro clearly wasn't the murderer. Ugh. But the best moment in the entire game, in my opinion, was the ending, because it got really, really good. Okay, okay, let's get back on track now. This is where all the secrets get revealed to the player, and here we learn about a great tragedy that happened to humankind. Also, we've lost all our past memories, because... Three years ago, Junko Enoshima entered Hope's Peak Academy. It's shocking, it's traumatic for the characters, and it fills them with despair. And there's nothing to be done. 
Mikado shatters away all of his despair and fills people with hope. How? He's just a regular student with no ultimate talent, and everything just happens thanks to his lucky ability. But as Kyoko says, And if that's true, I think we could call you the ultimate hope. What do you think? It's thanks to him that the class of Hope Speak Academy finally gets to stand outside for the first time in a long, long time. The gameplay for the entire Dinkinropa series is incredibly unique, and I've never seen anything like it before or after. Similar to Ace Attorney, you'll have to see through lies or contradictions and prove it wrong with evidence, of course. There are two parts in Trigger Happy Havoc, School Life and Class Trials. We'll get into School Life first, and then the Class Trials. School Life is your standard visual novel section, where you talk to other students and you just talk to them. There's a ton of text. Damn, this game is starting to feel like I'm reading a book. Shut the fuck up, Matthew. You are not funny. Now we're gonna head into the class trials, and they're the real meat and potatoes of this game. The thing that'll convince people to pick up the game. Here you're supposed to shoot pieces of evidence to counter contradictions or lies told by the other students. Wish I could do that in real life, to be honest. Oh man, that was a terrible idea. Getting back to the class trials, they're incredibly unique. Even if they's attorney a series that's somewhat close to the system, it's not at all similar at all. Here, there's an incredible amount of tension, due to everyone dying if you're wrong. Now there's four different parts in the class trials, and we'll go over all of them individually. By far the best part of the game, this is the main part of the class trials. Here you'll be discussing all the information given to you earlier in the case. And here you're trying to piece together what happened during the murder. This is my favorite part of class trials, as it's really well put together. Whenever you find a contradiction, it feels incredibly satisfying. This is by far the worst minigame ever. Why did the developers think this was fun? It's absolute garbage and they never got rid of it in 2 or V3. Another reason why this sucks is because you have to guess and in a game where you're supposed to find out the mystery, I think this is a really terrible way to force a player to get evidence or to come up with an answer. These are a one-on-one -on -one battle where you have to push through a person's lot and force them to tell the truth. This is a really good minigame if I remember correctly. Plus this is probably the best version in the franchise as I feel like future entries would make it too stressful or just put a small thing that's off and it ruins the entire experience of this minigame. The closing argument is a really cool part of the class trials. Here you're recreating the entire murder from the beginning to the end in a comic-like fashion and it's incredibly cool and stylistic. Though I found sometimes that even though I knew what had happened, some icons were kind of vague and so I would lose some points. And that's it for Trick or Happy Havoc! I hope you enjoyed this Halloween special. It took a while to make, but I'm incredibly happy with the results and what this turned out to be. And, oh for fuck's sake, I'm sorry everyone, but I'm gonna have to cut this video quite short. Alright, see you guys later. Motherfuck- I want to give a huge thanks to my friend Alex, who lent his voice for the intro of this video. Without him, this video would have been possible, but he definitely made this video better. So thank you, Alex. I'll leave his Twitter handle in the description and in the video itself, so if you really liked his voice acting, please let him know. And please follow him if you have a Twitter account. And please ratio him. I also want to give a thanks to Apo4444, because he really made this video a lot better by telling me to get some bitches. Alright, thanks for watching everyone.